for coming uh, to this first of my both lectures, designing a lecture course on Wikipedia and Wiki technologies. Uh, it is created by me, Vasya Tanasov, and my colleague, Maya Morinova. We are both from Bulgarian Wikipedia, and yeah, this is an image when Jimmy Wales was in Bulgaria two years ago. Um, a short introduction to, to what Bulgaria Wikipedia is uh, in uh, figures and numbers. Um, it was created in uh, December to, uh, 2003. Uh, it has uh, about 9 million people who speak the language around the world, which means about 9 million people who are potential editors. <laughs> Um, and as you can see from the figures, we are um, medium, okay, I would say relatively big because we are already in the 100,000 uh, club uh, since last year. And um, judging from these uh, last statistics, uh, yeah, uh, I can say that in Bulgarian Wikipedia, traditionally, quality matters more than quantity, meaning that we are not very tolerant towards stubs and substubs. Um, for the last four years, we've been conducting university wiki projects uh, in three universities in five different subjects, and I'm going to elaborate on this uh, during my second presentation. But now I would like to present you a university wiki projects, which is specifically designed to teach students what Wikipedia and wiki technologies are. Um, this is the first such course in Bulgaria to be, to be read, and I guess that it's one of the very few so far around the world. And I'm going to um, lead it. I'm a, actually, I'm a PhD student in Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. I do mathematical modeling. Um, I will tell a couple of words about the host institution in the next slide, but now uh, two more um, uh, lines with numbers. It's going to be read for the free trimesters of the forthcoming academic year, uh, 40 hours per trimester, and uh, it's going to be visited by 30, three groups of 30 students each trimester, um, mainly in maths and computer science specialties, uh, second to fourth grade. And now the host institution, this is the Faculty of Mathematics and Informatics in the Plovdiv University, which is the second largest state university in Bulgaria. It's located in Plovdiv, second largest town in, in the country. Um, and um, I would like to present uh, how we uh, ended to, with the design of this lecture course. Uh, actually, first thing which I have to say that we had quite short time for preparing uh, because I exploited my personal contacts with the dean of the faculty and um, it was about the time when the courses, elective courses were to be um, uh, approved by the faculty. Uh, so he said to me, you have very few time but please do, do your best. So we had about one month to prepare ourselves. And uh, as a um, beginning, uh, we started with um, some theoretical background about pedagogy. My colleague Maya is a PhD student in uh, pedagogy in Sofia University, so uh, she gave her input by um, providing the theoretical background with a, a book on how to design a university lecture course. Then, of course, we studied uh, a great number of research articles on uh, how Wikipedia and wikis are implied in education. And, of course, we studied the existing syllabi, which are uh, on, um, on this topic, uh, university courses on Wikipedia. Uh, so the first one is the Stockholm uh, University course 2008. Uh, but I have to say that it's in, focused in another direction. Because we have students in maths and computer science, our um, lecture course is going to be very technically oriented, much more technically than this one. And uh, compared to the second resource using, used, uh, which was uh, created by the Public Policy Initiative, I have to say that we are way more ambitious about what, what to teach students, as you can see from the syllabus after a while. Um, we held a two-week public consultation on our village uh, pump, asking the editors for feedback. What do they expect for students in Wikipedia? Thank you. For students on, on such subjects, uh, Wikipedia and wikis, uh, to, to be taught uh, so that uh, 
to have some idea of what the expectations are. Um, and of course, our own experience. I have experience about five years of uh, being uh, uh, editor, administrator, mentor of wiki projects. Um, I've been dealing with the um, popularization of uh, Wikipedia in Bulgarian society. So our own experience is really maybe the most judging part of um, when designing this lecture course. Um, now, a couple of words about the goals and objectives of this lecture course. Uh, of course, we, we aim to build an in-depth understanding of what Wikipedia is and what is not, um, and how to, uh, how to understand uh, the philosophy and technology of wikis. Um, of course, beside of the understanding, we would like to promote contribution. Uh, this is... Um, a goal which um, is, comes naturally to us, although it was not officially uh, explained to the faculty, because in order not to feel like uh, there is some lobbying, but of course this is uh, the, the thought which we always have to, to promote contribution and to have long-term, well-educated uh, contributors in result. And uh, to uh, show them the opportunity to, to use wikis in uh, another relevant context. They are uh, software uh, developers mainly, so uh, they can use wikis in different ways besides Wikipedia, besides contributing, reading and so. Uh, they can use wikis, for instance, uh, to create uh, technical writing, user documentation, coordination of their uh, software development projects. So uh, it's important for them to know the technology and use it in other contexts. Um, and more, to be more precise, uh, the objectives of the course was to, uh, are to uh, discuss some temporary problems and trends uh, so that yeah, they, they should know what the problems are and how to face them and how to solve them. And to facilitate the acquisition of knowledge and skills uh, so that we really are able to, to make them efficiently use wikis and Wikipedia. Uh, when I say knowledge and skills, I'm going to elaborate on this. Uh, we, the, the, the students who successfully complete the course are expected to know the key principles and policies of Wikipedia, uh, the main rules for editing and organizing the content, uh, the specifics of free content, free software and free licenses. Actually, for students in computer science, they're supposed or expected to know something about free software and free licenses, but this is not always the case. Um, computer law is not really very well taught in Bulgarian universities, in my humble opinion. So this is just another source from where they can learn about free software and free licenses. This is going to uh, benefit them in their future practice as programmers. Um, they should know criteria of notability of different subjects uh, in Wikipedian articles and, of course, criteria of text and uh, uh, multimedia encyclopedic content. What is encyclopedic? The definition of uh, and the notion of encyclopedic writing and illustrating. So, again, the students who are uh, successfully complete uh, the, the, the course are supposed to have certain skills. They are supposed to be able to freely navigate and use all the functionalities of a wiki. I have to say that I know a lot of experienced the Wikipedians and even administrators who do not know everything about special pages or about the AP. So um, knowing more how to navigate and fully exploit the wiki as a technology is important for them, and I suppose they will be interested. Um, they are supposed to adequately use and cite Wikipedia as a source in their academic researchers or in their practice in, in general. Yes, Wikipedia is not the ultimate source for, um, uh, to be cited, but it's often done. So if it's done, better do it, better do it properly. Um, to critically evaluate their sources of information. Um, it's very often the case when students uh, write an article and uh, under it they cite source Google, <laughs> Google, <laughs> which is of course very strange, but um, they need to be educated because obviously some of, the, um, some of their other teachers have not done it so far. To express themselves in an encyclopedic style, to create a date format, wiki pages, use texts, multimedia templates, 
and uh, in the end to install and configure and administrate a wiki. Um, now let me present you the syllabus itself. It's um, organized in 10 topics as much as the weeks per trimester are. Um, as I said, because the, the course is uh, going to be read in front of computer scientists and uh, mathematicians, um, it mainly deals with technical issues, so it's technically oriented, but not only. So for an introduction, uh, it's important to give a definition what encyclopedia is, to, to, to give them a context in which Wikipedia falls. So um, some history about encyclopedias around the world and in, in Bulgaria especially. And then we introduced Wikipedia. Um, its philosophy, its technology, its history, its um, side pro projects, sister projects of the Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, because we don't want to have only uh, lecture here, we want to have some practice. Uh, let's start with navigation, elements from the interface, and um, account registration. So they should be now aware from the very beginning, what are their preferences, uh, how they can set up uh, the, the wiki in a more friendly way. In the next topic, we are mainly dealing with edit mode and wiki markup. I'm going to skip it, uh, or just quickly go through it. Mainly, citing sources is one of the most important things here, because it's often the case uh, from our pra practice with um, university projects that students, even if they understand that they have to cite their sources, they do not know how to technically do it. There are different uh, methods. So here we only deal uh, with edit mode and the interface in edit mode and wiki markup. And uh, of course, if the uh, good plans of the um, Wikimedia Foundation for uh, having the new interface introduced without wiki markup, maybe later, for instance, next year, we won't talk so much about this. <laughs> um, in the next topic three, um, after introducing the technology of writing, we have to introduce the principles of writing. So the five pillars, the main content policies, uh, notability criteria for different subjects, uh, and the specific of the specifics of the encyclopedia style of writing. There are certain things to be explained here, and we are going to make something like brainstorming um, to ask students in advance before we show them uh, which are the the main things to ask them. What do you think? What are the specific things about the encyclopedic style of writing which uh, differentiate it from, say, journalistic or um, uh, scientific or essayistic uh, persuasive style of writing? So what are these things? And once they come up with some ideas, then we present uh, the whole set of different um, things to be thought about. And then we can again make brainstorming about what are from these nine things, which are the, say, the three most important. It's, imp it's interesting to see how students um, understand the writing in encyclopedia. Uh, topic four is about copyright and legal issues. Um, copyright issues, um, everything which I already said, free software, free licenses, different um, um, concepts like public domain, fair use, freedom of panorama. Actually, I'm presenting them in such a detail just to have an idea how, how deep we are going to de delve into in, the, in this course. Um, and um, if, uh, if everything runs uh, well, uh, we can invite here a guest lecturer. Some, uh, I suppose that someone from the team who localized Creative Commons to Bulgarian legislation will will gladly come and um, talk about uh, free software and free uh, licenses. Uh, so, and another important topic here is terms of use and terms of, terms of contribution. This is one thing which users in general have problems with understanding. Um, in the next topic five, again, um, something this something more more specific about community, about speaking about wiki etiquette, about wiki psychology, community psychology, uh, how to communicate, to interact, what are the important things to know when con contacting other Wikipedians, um, and 
here uh, a guest lecturer is again provided, uh, a colleague from Bulgarian version of Wikipedia who is a um, uh, network security uh, officer and uh, can speak more about um, trolling, vandalisms, um, privacy issues, so that give uh, another aspect of this discussion, uh, the more, I'd say, the, the black side of, of this, which is also important for students to know. Um, in the next topic, we are going to speak about multimedia. What are the criteria for having an um, illustration, <coughs> educational and encyc encyclopedic? Uh, again, some licensing, it's inevitable. Uh, creation and sharing of multimedia. Uh, we are going to practice upload of uh, uh, images and multimedia on Wikimedia Commons. This is one thing which uh, is a very big problem to our students so far. Uh, and uh, here we expect uh, an extensive hands-on practice. I will organize a visit to certain museums in Plovdiv to ask them to make um, illustrations of objects which then can be used in relative articles or going to a public event where um, public figures are going to, to be presented. Um, and the next topic seven, organization of the information. These are some more technical issues. Um, categories, lists, templates, and more about templates. Usage of templates, types of parameters, parser functions, then special pages and logs. And a uh, um, couple of words about media wiki namespace and how to translate and localize interface messages. Um, topic eight, user groups and rights. This is deliberately set to the end of the course. We, we wanted for, for people to um, not to delve into politics and to, into different user groups and rights because it, um, it is not so, so good for, for them. Uh, my experience is that if you start with dealing with such uh, things rather than writing articles and understanding the basics, uh, then your whole Wikipedia experience may uh, may simply be, be not as good as it should be. So it's not so fun, but it has to be uh, known. So main user groups, these are the main user groups which are in use in Bulgarian Wikipedia. We don't have stewards, we don't have check users, but it's important for them to know what is this. Um, it's uh, important also to know the main administrative rights, uh, protection, blocking, the deletion, and a guest lecturer here is again um, provided, uh, a person who is uh, operator of BOT, because as I said, students are from uh, c computer sciences, I suppose that some of them will be more interested in writing a new BOT rather than a n writing a new article. <laughs> um, so this is one thing which might be really interesting for them and they can contribute. And in the last two topics, uh, topic nine, wikis beyond Wiki Wikipedia, uh, the rest sister projects of uh, Wikimedia shall be presented. The applications of wiki websites in different contexts like business and education, we're going to present uh, the wiki hosting service, wiki.com, uh, media wiki, uh, and other distributions. And in the next topic, final one, installation and configuration of a uh, uh, wiki, media wiki website. As a conclusion, I would say four things. The first is that since the lecture course is elective, we, are, we expect that mm, motivated and interested people will attend. As I said, there are, go there are going to be 30 uh, people per trimester, which is very good. This is manageable. Um, this academic experience will be a chance for us to get some useful feedback from users who are potential editors, but are first of all users. Um, the related uh, publicity activities can draw interest, positive interest from other Wikipedia, uh, we <laughs> sorry, academic circles and the media, local media especially. And in the end, after we finish with this full year of um, um, uh, lecturing this lecture course, uh, I suppose that we'll have quite enough uh, uh, good practices to share and uh, we can provide them to the public policy initiative and the uh, Wikimedia outreach. And I very much thank you for your attention. Okay, they have, yeah.
Um, yeah, this is a good question. Um, I suppose that main, the big part of the uh, score which will, they will obtain in the end will be based on their, um, on their work in school. I, I very much insist on having face-to-face -face contact with them. Yes, their, off, uh, their online work on the wiki while we are not together is also important. But it's very important for me to communicate with them and to understand that what I say is what they hear. So um, our, um, our discussions in class are going to be, and, and their work in class is going to be deliberately the, the leading part of, the main part of the, the score. Uh, of course, they will have certain assignments like writing an article, um, um, solving an issue on an existing article, uh, creating a multimedia, including it in a relevant uh, article, but um, it, for me, it is not as important as how they have perceived Wikipedia and how well are they, um, how to say, predisposed to it. So I, I will definitely um, encourage critical thinking of Wikipedia and I will definitely not encourage uh, verbatim copying and um, things that violate our policies. Yeah. Um. Yes, it's provided to have regular feedback. Uh, one feedback in the beginning before we have started, just to see, just to understand how they perceive Wikipedia for, from the beginning and to understand whether something has changed. But I don't think that I, I'm, um, I have to uh, score them to mark their opinion of Wikipedia. I would just would like to understand whether they have changed critically and yes, yes. Definitely. This is one thing which I have to think about, and thank you for this idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I think my presentation is here. Hello, I'm Patricio Lorente uh, from Wikimedia Argentina. Um, I'd like to thank, to thank the uh, organizers uh, and congratulate them because we are having a great Wikimania. First, first of all, uh, I should ask you to forgive my English. If you discover I'm talking like Tarzan, don't worry, that's me. Yes? Well, a uh, brief uh, historical background first. In uh, 2007, we uh, um, launched Wikimedia Argentina. And uh, immediately after, we found that uh, we had the attention of two groups of people. The first group was the uh, journalist. For whatever reason, the journalists were very happy to have a, a face of a Wikimedia movement there, and they wanted all the time to ask uh, different stuff. The second group were teachers and educators uh, from primary school to university uh, that uh, had this uh, fear uh, to internet and especially to Wikipedia. And they called us all the time, asking for advice, and uh, we began to uh, develop 
uh, a specific workshops for teachers. And uh, in uh, while doing this, uh, we also learned several things about this relation between uh, digital culture, Wikipedia in particular, and education. Well, first I'm talking about what we've done. The first thing we um, tried to talk with teachers was how to read Wikipedia. If you've been at uh, uh, a conference, uh, the keynote conference uh, this morning, perhaps you remember that metaphor about the public, uh, 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 public restrooms. So, the first thing we try is to uh, uh, teach uh, how to find out uh, how dirt is the restroom, or uh, eventually uh, how to discover uh, by reading the, the history of the article, uh, but reading the discussion of the articles, uh, by uh, analyzing the article is itself, uh, do they have references? Do they have uh, pictures that, that are signs of a uh, well-developed article? The second thing we talked uh, with um, teachers was uh, about, uh, this is not a traditional encyclopedia. You can navigate through articles and this uh, that seems to be really obvious uh, is not often uh, used by uh, teachers uh, when trying to discover relationships between different concepts. So we worked on this field also. Then, especially with uh, uh, teachers of the last years of secondary school and uh, professors of the university, we talked about how to contribute with Wikipedia. Uh, we have the, um, the lucky to have uh, in Wikimedia Argentina university teachers, university professors that uh, use Wik Wikipedia in their classes. And uh, we had uh, real examples uh, about how to use Wikipedia that is not just to write uh, for students um, writing an article in Wikipedia uh, means to interact with a complex community out, outside our classroom. Implies uh, how to uh, make uh, proper uh, quotations, how to sit, how to discuss with other people, etc. Then obviously also how to contribute to other projects, especially commons, and also we can use what talking with, um, 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 how do you call it? Um, uh, uh, journalism college, journalism uh, courses. And uh, this is a uh, really important uh, topic for us. There is increasing our language presence in the web and we are talking about minority languages. In Argentina and in Latin America, there exist uh, many languages that has a really uh, poor presence in internet. Uh, Guarani, Quichua, Mapudungun, Aymara, these all are native languages that many of them have, uh, have their own Wikipedia. And uh, in fact, we have uh, schools in Argentina that not only teach in Spanish, but also in one of these languages. But they don't have, uh, um, they don't have uh, uh, sources in their own languages. So there is also a challenge to create the sources by contributing to Wikipedia in their languages. When we collected all these kind of uh, uh, experiences, uh, we um, published a little booklet that is called Wikipedia in el aula. That means Wikipedia in the classroom. 
uh, there is a brief summary of uh, real e classroom experiences and is uh, intended to uh, or is made for other teachers. We found that uh, it's better to uh, share experiences from teachers, not us telling teachers what to do. What we've learned in the process? Well, many people think that students know everything about uh, computers and teachers don't. That is not always true. We found that uh, students, perhaps, uh, or young people, know a lot about their favorite applications. Perhaps they are experts in Facebook. But, but when, when you take them out of their favorite applications, they don't know how to start and what to do. Uh, this, the second thing we have learned that is uh, not many people in the uh, educational system is trying to learn and teach how to find useful information. And uh, in internet, this is a critical skill. Um, the, um, not only teachers, but also students think that Google or Wikipedia is internet, you know, and um, um, as uh, using Wikipedia may uh, be very useful to develop writing skills, uh, we first have to, oh, we first, sorry, we also have to develop a skill about uh, finding information. Copy and paste. All the teachers, the, the main uh, fear of teachers is uh, my students, uh, my, my, my students are copying and pasting Wikipedia articles. But uh, what we think is, if the, question, if the questions you are uh, asking to your students can be answered by copying a single article of encyclopedia, perhaps you're asking wrong. Um, in fact, copying and pasting uh, is not new. Uh, when I was a student, I also copied. It's not exactly the same thing, because uh, once you find uh, the text you want to copy, there is no further uh, uh, intellectual operation. You just uh, copy. But uh, perhaps the teachers uh, should try to uh, ask different things, things that can be answered by copying a single article. And uh, other thing we learned in this process is that uh, it's not the best way to uh, go to a school, to secondary school or to the university uh, and ask uh, the people to improve Wikipedia. Uh, why should them? And I know why they should, but uh, it's a very large answer. The best way to uh, go to schools is saying, we are not asking you to help us. We want to help you because we found that uh, the Wikipedia experience can help the educational process. Yes, I, I always remember when Lyon Wyatt talking about GLAM says, don't go to a museum and say to the director, we're going to free your content. That's, the most, that's not the best way to, to begin. And uh, in the classroom, uh, the richness of Wikipedia is not about its content, or not only about that. It's about its, its dynamic. It's about uh, 
knowing that uh, knowledge is a social construction. Uh, and this is a, a lesson it, in itself. What are, are we going to do in the next months as Wikimedia Argentina? Well, first of all, we are working with Educ.a. There is the official content developer of the Federal Ministry of Education, and we are developing with them uh, a material that goes to every teacher in the country. As this uh, website, this, uh, this is an official website of the Ministry of Education that is called Wikipedia en el aula, Wikipedia in the classroom, with uh, papers from experts, but also uh, practical advices, and also our booklet. We are now members of the Advisory Council of a governmental program that's called Conectar Igualdad. The main of this program is to deliver a netbook to every secondary student of the country. There is three million of netbooks to three million of students. Um, we are working with the Ministry of Education of Buenos Aires province, which is the largest province of Argentina. And we are planning to uh, run Wikipedia on every school server. That, that is important because most of the schools don't have internet connection. And having Wikipedia uh, offline uh, is nice, but you miss the most important thing about Wikipedia that is editable. But running in the servers of the school, they can make their own version of the encyclopedia, and for us this is also important. They, 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 they are going to work with Wikipedia as if it were online, because it will run through the, through the local network. And uh, uh, that's it. Uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, one of our main activities. Uh, not only because we really like, we think there's a huge potential by working with our educators, but also because the educators are asking, please work with us. And this is for, for, for us really, really important. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, of course. Yes, Samuel. Uh, yes, uh, we are fearing uh, different uh, possibilities, but we are going to work on that. We, uh, it's not done uh, already. Yes, uh, we think that uh, every school ha has a librarian. And uh, the, the Ministry of Education is thinking that perhaps the li librarian could gather the, the, the modified content through all the schools and make a kind of secondary, uh, um, Wikipedia for secondary students, kind of like that. But uh, we've not arrived to that point yet. Okay. Any other question? Well, thank you. Uh, I brought some uh, booklets. If you want them, it's for you. Uh, hey, your attention, please. The people out there, thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about Wikipedia and second language learning. That's why the L2 is, uh, stands for. And I must confess that uh, this was a challenging subject for me because um, 
the, as we will see later, this topic is extensive, so it's difficult to summarize it in just 20 minutes. But I will do my best, I promise. So the first thing we should know is, OK, uh, call is, of course, not a verb in English. It means it stands for computer assisted language learning. And here we have a more technical definition. And it says, any process in which a learner uses a computer and as a result improves his or her language. And it's an old process. It dates back to the 1950s. And for many people, 1956, OK, 60 years ago. So, uh, but yes, uh, some universities 60 years ago experimented with large mainframes. They are not like our computers, but they were like um, a wall. <laughs> but OK, these were the first experimentations. Um, the first computers were not available for everyone. They were just dedicated to research and campus uh, work. So, OK, uh, I am going to give a brief uh, history, a brief survey of uh, the history of computer assisted language learning. And the first thing we have in the 50s we are now in the 50s. This is Plato, Programmed Logic Learning for Automatic Teaching Operations. I know it's difficult, but uh, it was carried out by the University of Illinois in 1959. And it was mostly dedicated to the teaching of Russian, especially Russian scientific documents, not just common language. And it was like, um, it's difficult to compare to a mother translator, but it was like uh, the grandfather of translators today. And OK, and we had this. It was, of course, not uh, advanced. It was rudimentary. And uh, then we had another thing from the 50s that it was like a simulation. So people in the classroom or um, at the university could simulate talks about uh, real life situations. So this like. It sounds like primitive for us today, but this is how everything began. And now we just trying to go in the time. And we are now in the 70s and 80s. And these were popular programs in, for learning languages. And uh, the first thing is Macario. Uh, this was uh, a software dedicated to the learning of Spanish. And it was like a commercial video, because um, let's say that uh, it was not just for instruction. It just uh, took uh, some publicity and real life context. And the people could learn the language by listening and having a face-to-face, -face, uh, almost face-to-face -face communication. Um, it was like a film. So if you want to follow the argument, you should uh, pay attention. And then this was uh, difficult um, because it was a, a linear program. So it was like following the tape. But the non-linear programs is uh, something that was invented afterwards. <laughs> and Montevideo and Interactive Digame were also dedicated to the learning of Spanish. Let's say so. Um, for example, the uh, Interactive Digame was a teacher-led video base. Let's say that it was um, uh, here the teacher was the great authority in the classroom, and the materials were designed uh, following this purpose. Um, Montevideo actually introduces a plaza where the learning is confronted with a local citizen. It's like if you were here in Israel and you are uh, most of you come from abroad now, and you face a local citizen from here, and you just start. Uh, to um, chat or to talk in Ibru, and this is more or less uh, how it works. And you had multiple choices of response. So this is not a non-linear program, um, because uh, there are several options. And previous programs, you only had um, just one step, and you have to follow it. But this uh, gives you more space for invention. That is the most important thing of all, I think. OK, we are still in the 70s and 80s. Um, 
And this was an interesting program. It was the Athena Language Learning Project in Massachusetts Institute of Technology. This is uh, quite um, common and well-known institute. And uh, well, this was um, another innovation. It was like uh, using a university exchange, Unix machines were connected to each other. It was like a tandem, a network. And for the first time, you could experiment with others uh, in a kind of network. So this is one of the main innovations. But the one I want to, foc uh, to focus on now is uh, Elisa, and it was named after George Bernard Shaw's character in Pygmalion, who is taught uh, how to speak correctly. So uh, this is quite illustrative because Elisa, as we will see, uh, not here, but okay, yes. How does Elisa work? So. Most of you, uh, perhaps, if you have entered Wikipedia or something uh, similar, uh, there are several bots today. For example, uh, in the Spanish Wikipedia and in the Catalan one we had in the IRC uh, channel, IRC, uh, a bot. So you ask him questions and he, uh, it uh, gives you a response. So Elisa, for example, uh, asks you, how are you today? And the learner, I'm not feeling well. And uh, this program, uh, the thing that um, did was repeating the last phrase of the learner. So it's like a simulation of an artificial uh, conversation. So it, it gives the sense that you are talking to someone, but uh, to make it more natural. But of course, Eliza was not um, perfect because uh, it's limited. Uh, it's artificial intelligence. This is quite primitive because we are still in the 70s, but this, is, um, this was, of course, um, under, uh, underwent a perfection process uh, afterwards. But this is le the first step to, um, to simulate a real face-to-face -face conversation, but using the uh, computer. Now we are just in the 90s, and in the 90s we had several options. The one I want to um, draw, uh, call your attention on is uh, Who's Oscar Lake? This was a software. And for example, you had uh, for the first time more than 1,000 vocabulary words. And you had videos, answers, comments, advice, many other options to improve your language skills. This was quite uh, common in the 90s, of course. Uh, and this is another um, use of uh, ELISA, but this, this came afterwards, because ELISA was like uh, a primitive program. And uh, after ELISA, um, the one that came and was more famous was Doctor. Doctor is like ELISA, but uh, simulates that he's a, um, a doctor, a, a psychiatrist. And you go like on a therapy, and you start a conversation, uh, be, um, and he likes analyzing you, you know, but it's uh, a bot, so it's not a real conversation. But, for example, uh, why do you say that? Now you are just talking nonsense and all these things, okay, here. Um, this, of course, uh, was not a coincidence because Eliza was using a um, uh, more general language, so the limitations were um, great. And now Doctor uh, was trying to uh, use uh, the, the slang of a, of a doctor. Yeah. And so the language is more limited, the options seem more natural, and you uh, have more possibilities to, um, to talk to someone and make sense of a conversation. Okay, now we are in Wikipedia. Okay, Wikipedia is um, an encyclopedia. It was uh, perhaps its main goal is not the learning of languages, it's another goal. But um, what I want to show today is that uh, this is like an evolution. Okay, so um, we can l still learn languages in an autonomous way using Wikipedia. That was my case. I became fluent in Catalan using Wikipedia. And okay, and we have several options. We have, for example, second uh, foreign language. There is L2 translation, IRC. That it stands for Internet Relay Chat. Uh, 
uh, more than uh, 270 languages and a multicultural environment. We can see that here is a multicultural environment because uh, there are uh, attendants for more than, uh, uh, yes, uh, 50 nationalities, I think. Uh, one of the main things that uh, Wikipedia can make use of is the translation. Uh, I'm giving you, for example, uh, an example. Uh, you have a translation page here, and where it says source la uh, language code, you should put, for example, if you translate the article from English, you should put N or if, uh, FR if it was translated from French. And then you have the version of the article, the source pa uh, page title, there you should put the original title of the article uh, from where you uh, translated. And then uh, the second option we have here is AmicaBot. Um, let's say that it's uh, better now than a year ago because uh, it can translate from German, English, French, or Spanish into Catalan. Okay? So you only have to create a page with this template, Petitio de Traducción, that is a translation request and uh, the title of the page you want to translate, and then the bots uh, translates the article for you. Okay, it's an automatic translator. You will find many mistakes um, because translators, uh, automatic translators are not perfect. But um, then you can correct it. Of course, you have to revise the article. Okay, you cannot leave it uh, this way. But it's a useful tool if you want uh, to learn uh, more uh, languages. One of the things uh, I want to talk about translation in Wikipedia is um, how editors uh, involved in translation. There are several reasons, but I found uh, this to be more interesting for our purpose and is to create and or complete an article which is missing or incomplete, okay? Uh, for example, uh, if I go to the uh, English Wikipedia and I found an article which is, uh, for me, uh, gives a lot of information, uh, and I, then I go to my language, and it could be Spanish or Catalan or French or, or, or whatever, and the article is shorter and it's incomplete, I can use uh, the content of the English Wikipedia and translate it to, in order to complete the article in the language I want. Uh, or if the article doesn't exist in the language I want to read because it's my native language and I don't have that information, I can translate it from zero, so it's okay. Um, one motivation for this is uh, the topic is interesting, relevant, or has some special value for the editor, okay? When you usually uh, get involved in translation, you are uh, interested in the topic. You write about your city, your sport club, your country, whatever. So motivation is important when you are translating. Um, your article can be reviewed, corrected, and or modified by others. It's like a tandem. You are working with other people's Wikipedia. You write, and then someone uh, comes and corrects the article. So um, it's, you learn from your mistakes, because if you can have grammar mistakes in a foreign language, and then uh, this article can undergo revision. And you see, okay, in the history of the article, okay, he correct me this, so I was wrong in this, and for the next time, you do it better. And motivation, you can get feedback and your article is read by others. So one of the other motivations is, okay, I'm going to uh, write about something that is going to be read. And that's uh, an important uh, step, because um, the fact that, uh, someone else uh, will read your article, motivates you in order to create it. You are not wasting your time. You are just helping the community. Uh, well, okay, Wikipedia in the classroom. This is, uh, well, this is um, kind of um, related to what Patricio uh, said before. You have to encourage your students to use uh, Wikipedia as active users, create stops, correct minimum mistakes, grammar, spelling, style, reward them, especially if they are kids. Okay, uh, it's important to reward them because um, especially if they are um, primary school uh, students uh, or high school students, if you say, okay, we are going to uh, write in Wikipedia and the person uh, who writes better will uh, win, I don't know, uh, 
the highest mark in the class or just uh, $100 or, or something like this. And they are going to be motivated, especially if they are kids. You know, you know uh, they know that you are going to give something about that. And we are uh, doing something like this in the Catalan Wikipedia, actually. So some tips to follow is try to find a common field of knowledge to work on. For example, science, literature, sports, cinema, etc. To uh, focus on a specific topic is really important because um, you are going to write about this. So ask your students to write about a given topic. Okay. So today we are going to write about science. So uh, you give them feedback about how to write it. And give a brief tutorial on how to do Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not easy, okay? uh, if, especially if they are not used to Wikipedia. Uh, so a brief introduction is always necessary. And if the teacher uh, doesn't know how to edit Wikipedia, there are also uh, tutorials on Wikipedia. There are experienced users who can make use of um, or can introduce you to Wikipedia. So there are uh, always people who are going to help you. And be brave. Ask them to create stubs, especially if it is the first time on Wikipedia, and they do so in a foreign language. Okay? If, you're, if it is, yes, your uh, foreign language. Uh, try to be brief, okay, so, yes, okay, and then we have interwikis, they let us know and read, consult, and give an article in different languages, okay, interwikis tell you if the article exists in another language, if it, if it doesn't appear, uh, the interwiki, it's, uh, it means that uh, the article is not there, so you can't translate it or create it. Uh, here we have a translation, it's not a literal translation, it's a right, uh, a just um, an adaptation. I translate this article from English into Catalan, but I modify it myself because I, I try to put something from my own. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, okay, important achievements, you learn the structure of the sentence. Uh, this is quite complicated, but while you are translating, you learn how to build up sentences, and this is important and construct bigger structures. Uh, other useful tools we have, automatic translators online, IRC, tutorials, Wiktionary, it also tells you, uh, it, the Wiktionary is also important because it tells you how the word is uh, spelled out and pronounced in different languages. Okay, and I'm just finishing. Ideas for the future, encourage your people to use Wikipedia, give lectures whenever possible, and attend important meetings to promote its use. Uh, promote groups of uh, work in Wikipedia, for example, we have the experience of a user in Spanish Wikipedia who is uh, Santi Perez. He's an administrator there, and he was an assistant teacher of Spanish at the University of Limerick. And he encouraged his students to create articles about Ireland, who was, uh, which was their country in Spanish. So they can write about their language, uh, for example, their, their place in Spanish. This is an example of user Maurice Nolan. Uh, she is uh, Irish, and she wrote about uh, this place in Ireland in Spanish. So, and okay, and thanks for your interest. Uh, okay, it's it's all. Thank you. Okay, if you have any question, um, I will answer. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Tell me. Okay, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Because I used the Tagalog Wikipedia to relearn Filipino, mm -hmm. which I almost forgot when I moved back to the Philippines after living for a while in the United States. But my question for you today is, um, when it comes to language learning, obviously, we have, even in the Tagalog Wikipedia, we have an American who's learning Tagalog and is editing pages of the Tagalog Wikipedia. But we cannot avoid the fact that if you're going to be a newbie and you're going to be someone who will be editing in a language and it's not your own, you're going to be run, you could run into tension with more established editors on the on the on the language version. You may have a Wikipedia, for example, where let's say you're new and you want to learn the language, therefore you edit the Wikipedia. But then you're going to have older editors one day like what are you doing? Oh, excuse me. Like you're gonna have older editors one day, oh, what are you doing? Or you do not know what you're doing. So how do you avoid um, tension between Wikipedia editors when you are when you use Wikipedia to study a new language? Okay, uh, this is important. Um, my experience it was on a smaller Wikipedia. 
and here you don't face tensions. And actually, they uh, encourage you to write in their language. It's uh, the Catalan community. Um, for example, if you make mistakes, um, they can correct you. And But um, you should have a better command of the language if you want to write a complete article. My advice is that you start uh, with the basic steps. You just try to write a stuff, a short article about three lines. Uh, it's better because you are going to learn about that. And if the language is similar to your native language, and uh, you can use an automatic translator to help you, to assist you in the, in the writing of uh, complicated structures. But make sure that uh, then uh, you correct the possible mistakes, or uh, you can also ask someone from the community to help you. In the chat, you are always uh, going to find someone uh, to help you in that, uh, in that case, okay? Thank you. Yes? No, no. No? Okay. Please, I'm sorry about that. You can talk later. Okay. Thank you. Actually, it was remote to him. All right. So you can talk with him later. Sorry about okay. that. Can there I you ask, go. Can we? The, it, it will work. Wow. Open it. Starts working. This is one of the moments um, uh, I'm in currently, um, which you won't be in. My laptop uh, resigned. So my presentation is on the laptop, and my laptop resigned, but I'm glad that I had, um, I have a draft on Google Docs, so I have, you will hear a talk. You, I have no presentation for you. My laptop is fine. You think so? Is it? Yes, it is. So maybe give me five more minutes and I will have a presentation then and not just a talk. So please. Yeah, now we have a presentation, spread the word, defocusing educational efforts is my, is my topic on which I want to, to talk to you. Um, it's about, um, in, I'm a project manager for Wikimedia Deutschland and I'm um, working on the Wikimedia school project which we had in schools for some years now. and. Uh, I want to tell you why we made a fault and how we will change it in the next coming time. Um, we focused on secondary schools right from the start. This was the main fault we did. Um, we, have, we had some primers in 2006 and, and it were large events. Okay. And we had some pilot and we had a pilot on teaching pupils in 2008 and 2009. And we had a pilot on instructing teachers in 2009 and 2010. And then we started to install a volunteer network since 2010. But there are so many teachers and so many classes. The problem was that when we said we want to do it by ourselves, we want to do it by a few persons only, we cannot reach them all. And the trouble is the first lesson we had to learn is there is no impact when you start single events and you are doing this with single persons. And so you will not, have, you will not cause an impact. So we started to found a volunteer network which is nationwide distributed and currently approximately around about 20 active volunteers. Um, their work is to do all the coursework and they will communicate with the schools and they will do all the appointments themselves absolutely independently. And, they and as a network, they develop the um, the curricula and they develop the presentations and they develop the material themselves. So Wikimedia Deutschland's work, the task is just to work as an agent. We take, we accept the, the requests of schools we, uh, um, when they came and say, we want you to, to make a presentation from us to tell us about media literacy, which is our main issue currently. We accept the requests and we give them to the, to, the, um, to the volunteers which make contact then and uh, do the rest themselves. 
We provide a wiki for the internal communication of this volunteer network. They can develop their, in, it, it's a closed wiki, it's not an open wiki, because they can tell about their experiences there among this small circle, and they can say, no, we have a, had a bad experience. This is very important that you can trust one another and that you are not in public in this case. Wikimedia Deutschland supervises the network, and we are setting some standards, and we try to have some control, but we're doing additionally some public relations, because these are tasks you cannot delegate to single persons. Um, you can uh, integrate them, but basically making marketing of such a program is the work for a larger organization. And twice a year we are starting, we're running workshops, and we train public speaking there, which is very important, and uh, we discuss the results um, of, uh, of the experiences that the volunteers have, and we enforce the further development of the content of the, of the talks the volunteers have in schools. So the result of installing such a network is obvious. In 2006 and 2007, we had just two events. It were the primers I, I told you about in the history. In 2008 and 2009, we had the pilot with about five events, nine events with a pilot concerning on, uh, on teachers. And Mark Brad here, you can find all the events which took place in, almost, in about 11 months now. Um, these, are, these took place. Since we have the volunteer network, you see the counts explode almost, and the counts are still rising. And we are pretty sure that we can um, match around about 75 um, events this year, and maybe in the, in the, in the coming year, around about 100 um, regions. This causes an impact already. We can see that teachers tell one, one teacher to the other, tells about this program, and, uh, and is interested in, and thus um, it is, it's getting easier for us to make the promotion. Ellie Köpf rules. This means that uh, we have one person which really cares about the, um, the Wikimedia Schul project. Um, she is doing the campaigns with us. She has a, a, a pedagogic background. Does she knows with whom to talk? What about what, what are the issues? Who are the important persons? And this is a very very important uh, point. Why she is really um, she is really awesome. She is doing an awesome work in the last year. But we are, I'm talking about schools, this means about pupils, and I'm talking about teachers, but there are a lot of other target groups. Um, many of them we already contacted, we already had um, um, uh, talks and, um, with them, and basically we find out all groups are interested in the same things. We have different motivations. If you are in a company, um, you might have the interest to introduce your, um, that the company um, wants to introduce it, um, themselves as, uh, as uh, wants to control their own pages. But you have to tell them that this is not possible. You have to communicate about the rules and of the principles of Wikipedia as it is. So, and this is always the same, um, not dependable, by the target group. There is no difference in the, t um, there is a difference in the motivation, but there is no difference in the results. So don't make one. And this is the reason why the title is Defocusing Educational Efforts. There is a broad spectrum of target groups, but there is, there is a low spectrum of things to tell about Wikipedia which is, it, it's quite easy. You have to act on media literacy. You have to tell about free knowledge. What is free knowledge? What is Wikipedia, basically? And how does it work? These are, these are four or five points. You have to um, talk about the quality management which is working in Wikipedia. And this is almost all the things you have to tell somebody. So if you combine those lessons learned, we say, found a network of volunteers who spread their knowledge and spread the word to everyone, to all the groups, don't make a difference. But there are problems. 
And some of the problems are that to make the program known is tough. I, I told you already, you have to campaign a lot, and schools are quite skeptic about, and they are hard to reach. It's not easy to find them. And uh, so you should do a lot of campaigning with mailings. You should have um, contact to the press and, and starting things in cities and contacting the press, which reports and other schools might follow then if, you, if, if they know about that. Um, you should um, be in expositions where you can talk to teachers, where you can talk to school directors. This is pretty important. And make mailings. Continue with mailings and continue. And sometimes things will start rolling. And you need to expect some time to make it roll. Another problem is to keep the volunteers motivated. This is a cultural issue I have been recently um, in, in the United States where the Compass um, Ambassador Program, it really works by, with Europe and euphoria. They, the people are very, very engaged um, for the thing them itself. It's really, they have a vision, obviously. You can see how it works with awards as, a, as, as an important signal of um, appreciation. Um, there are honorariums um, sometimes which, which are paid in schools and it, the, um, the volunteers can keep the honorariums. But if you, if you make them used that there is a honorarium paid, um, this can cause a bias because somebody might say, hmm, okay, but I do not want to talk to the NGO which cannot pay something, but I want to go to the school which pays 200 euros per, per talk. So you have to take care and you have to make some regulations that um, this does not cause a bias, which is very important because pure dedication is rare and um, this, you have to find other ways to motivate people. This question is currently still discussed within Wikimedia Deutschland. Probably, um, we will, and possibly, we will make a mix. So, if you say you can have a, a, a talk in a school, but then the next talk should happen in an NGO or, or a similar way. There are other programs um, and other educational programs in Wikimedia Deutschland currently starting with senior citizens, for example. And so later on, we will um, start with a campus ambassador program. <laughs> Um, program um, and there is not there is no money to expect so you need to motivate the people in a different way too this is a presentation which started uh, quite uh, complicated for me I'm so I'm a bit upset sorry for this um, if you have any questions I'd be glad to to respond to them And no, this is a part of the honorarium set. It's just as if you hire, if, um, schools have um, a certain budget for this. And so the, the, um, you, you have travel expenses, but Germany is quite small and we have nationwide distributed. So it's rare that uh, about 100 uh, kilometers have to be driven. So it's not uh, um, too much. Wikimedia uh, Deutschland itself does not um, pay for, um, pay to the, uh, um, volunteers or to the schools any money. There's no money in it from Wikimedia Deutschland, basically. So, are, are you encouraging? You mean the volunteers? How we encourage them? We guess it's important. To, uh, basically, they are Wikipedians at first, so they have a certain motivation to share what what is it, what is it all about. This is one point. Another one is we that the training them does mean that you, you help them to be more sure in the, by public speaking. <laughs> so you, those trainings are worth a lot. Um, and obviously, if you are a student and you have um, the possibility to get 100 or 150 euros um, for making a talk on the things you love and you're passionate for, it's not too bad either. Another question? Thank you very okay, much. thank you very much.